Hey, it's Jay Rod here from Jay Tech. Good to see you again. Today we're going to be talking about this 1998 Peterbilt with a C13 CAD engine in it. We're going to go over some of the components of the engine, where they're located, and give a description of what they do and how they function. The serial number and model number on this particular C13 is located on the top front of the engine block. They're located all kinds of different places, so, I mean, you just got to look for them but it has important information. Okay, the first component we're gonna go over today is an aftercooler. It's located right in front of the engine. It's mounted onto the stock radiator, and it's basically just a smaller version of a radiator. And what that does is it removes the heat from the compressed air coming from the turbo, which goes into the induction system, which gives it, you know, in turn gives it the efficiency and power. Okay, the next part we're gonna talk about is the air intake. This happens to be located on the driver's side of the vehicle. What this does is part of the induction system. It brings air into the engine block. Now, you need lungs to breathe. Same thing with an engine. Usually, there's a manifold, but this is an air cave. Don't worry, there's no bears in there. But anyway, this gives the lungs to breathe, which gives it power. More air, more power. All right, we just got done talking about the air intake. So now we're going to talk about where it goes. That's the exhaust manifold. So when you take a breath in, it's got to go out. Engines are no different. And if there were any bears in that air cave, they're going to get out through here. It's their back door, so to speak. If you look down in there, that long, rusty pipe is running in there. Is where it's located. It's usually on the side of the engine block, and it runs down out and up through the stack. And that's how it's done. All right, next thing we're going to talk about is the vibration dampener. It's a pretty simple thing. It goes on the front of the crankshaft, and it's just a balancing weight. Because when the crankshaft moves, it creates a lot of movement. And what that does is it counters that movement, which it dampens the vibrations. And you don't want a lot of vibrations in an engine, because when you get that, nuts, bolts, all kinds of stuff start falling off. You don't want your motor dancing around. It's not good for business. You want to take a look. It's usually right in the front of the engine on all the pulley systems. The fan's right there. It's this big wheel right here. Now there's a rubber or silicon ring that goes in there that counteracts the weight. There's different kinds of, of vibration dampeners. Okay, I'm going to talk about the crankcase breather. The sound, it does exactly what it sounds like it does. It allows the crankcase to breathe. It expels gases in a controlled manner from the engine located on this particular cap right here at the top and this is the breather hose that goes out and it goes down through the engine to the bottom and it just allows okay, it to breathe. talk about the air compressor next. Pretty simple. Presses air for the air brakes. It's a big truck, you got to have air brakes. What it does is, is it compresses air and it sends it back into what I call a buddy tank, called a reservoir tank, but it compresses air back there to hold storage air and it sends it, sends it at a certain PSI so that you know, you're not over compressing, it has a release valve and all kinds of other stuff. But if you look right here, it's located, pretty simple. Air compressor setup. You got your gearbox with your pistons and all your stuff. Compresses air, sends it back through to the reservoir tank or the buddy tank. And this one is gear driven. And that's basically how an air compressor works. All right, up next is your water pump. What your water pump does is it puts cool water in through the engine just to keep your temperatures down and it helps with the cooling of the engine. Now what that does is it keeps you from overheat. You don't want to overheat, you overheat, bad things happen. You don't want bad things happening. On this particular vehicle, on the C13 engine or Caterpillar, this is located right here. This is the pump, and it pumps the water through the engine. It's part of the radiator system, the cooling system. And that's what it does. Now on this particular engine, the C13, it's located right here above the water pump. And this is the housing for the thermostat. The thermostat sits inside there and rests in there. And that's where it's at on this engine. The turbo, everybody's favorite. What it does, creates more power. That's what all people say, right? Well, that's true. 
it does create more power, but it also, you know, it does better for emissions and other things as well. But what it, how it does that is it takes exhaust air, circulates it back through the turbine, goes back in the engine before it expels it out the stacks. And what that does is create more power because air in an engine gets more power. That's all it does, really, man. That's 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 all you got right there. This is the turbo. It's a nice spinny looking thing. I like turbos myself. More power. All right, up next is the oil cooler, another integral part of the cooling system. We gotta keep these big things cool because you don't want them getting hot. These things run real hot. Without a cooling system, you don't get good. You don't get your food delivered, you don't get nothing delivered. It's all over if there's no cooling. Now what the oil cooler does is it runs from here. This is the cooling system. Basically, in the center of this, there's lines that run the oil through it. And the coolant on the outside runs on the outside to keep the oil cool. And that runs back in the engine. So then you get a nice cool oil, like a summer breeze, going back into that engine, keeping it nice and cool. And that's how it works. All right, next thing I'm going to talk about is an accessory drive. Pretty simple thing. It runs accessories. It relieves stress from the battery and the alternator, so that's not overworking and you know doing all that stuff that by itself. So basically, on this one, it is located right up here. We'll come take a look. Right here, wholly driven, turns it kind of similar to an alternator with a power source, and it runs all the accessories, your wipers, all your stuff. It just relieves stress from the battery and the alternator. And that's all it does. That's, that's that one. Okay, moving on. Up next we've got the ECM, the Electronic Control Module. Basically what that did, does is it's the brain for the entire truck. It tells the engine what to do, when to do it, all the sensors, it controls all that stuff. Pretty simple, but pretty complex as well. It's located on this motor right here at the rear of the engine block, right down here if you can see it. It's got two main plugs that run up to here. It runs wires up through the firewall and into the cab of the truck to let you know what's going on, give you readings and all the stuff you need to know, like oil pressure and all that fun stuff. And that's it. All right, moving on. This is the fuel pump. Without the fuel pump, you're basically not gonna get anywhere. And you need to get somewhere like everybody else. It's usually located around the air compressor and by the fuel filter. And what that does is it pumps fuel from the tank into the engine. All right, folks. That was a tour of a C-13 Caterpillar engine. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Nick Green. He does all my camera work stuff. And he's a good guy. He does his thing. Go check out his YouTube channel, Nick Green. Um, that's about it. That's all I got for you. Just remember, safety is no accident.